This is the Worldwide Truth of God radio and television program coming to you from the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. Our international headquarters is located at 5105 North 5th Street. That's North 5th Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, here in the United States of America, where the Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings is our general overseer. Uh, this program, as many do know and have seen in the past, uh, is on the air for your edification that you may hear and understand and gather the word of God to you and make preparation to meet God. Is that right? My right, God, we thank God again. So we're going to present on to you our leader, teacher, guide. He's the messenger, certainly the messenger of the almighty God, the apostle, Pastor Gino Jennings. Let the church say amen. Let the church say 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 Let 
church says. Let the church say. Let the church say. Brothers and sisters, friends, and to my loyal enemies, this is the greatest religious program here in America today. You know it as the truth of God. This is where we bear witness there is only one true living God. He have no partners, he have no rivals, he have no associates, and he have no equals. He is God alone. He alone is the true sender of holy prophets and holy apostles. He made the heavens and earth by his power and established the world by his wisdom. Stretch forth the heavens by his understanding. We thank him for being a true sender and teacher of holy prophets and holy apostles and establishing the way of holiness. Holiness have no beginning and holiness have no ending. We are indebted to him for his goodness to us all. And we are bringing this meeting almost to a close. We've got one more session and that's this afternoon and but God knows we've been having a good time thus far. To all of my beloved television viewers and my enemies, again, we're coming to you live from Greensboro, North Carolina, in the midst of our youth conference. And it certainly has been a wonderful meeting. So far, 94 souls were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I received a text message this morning that one sister received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So that's a blessing. The Bible says how God added daily such as should be saved. I want to just go through this list and kind of update everybody where we are with baptisms. Uh, three in Jamaica, three in Trinidad, one in the Cayman Islands, and as I mentioned, 94 so far the youth conference, 25 in headquarters, 10 in New Brunswick, New Jersey, one in Pine Bush, New Jersey, six in Baltimore, Maryland, two in Delmar, Delaware, seven in Fredericksburg, Virginia, two in Portsmouth, one in Raleigh, two in Charlotte, North Carolina, four in Rocky Mount, one in Columbia, two in Florence, 12 in Atlanta, two in Mobile, one in Jackson, Mississippi, six in Orlando, one in Tallahassee, Florida, nine in Detroit, five in North Chicago, three in Milwaukee, three in Lafayette, Louisiana, six in Memphis, Tennessee, four in Houston, Texas, one in Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota, two in Los Angeles, one in Sacramento. Our international Meetings, one in Italy, three in Johannesburg, South Africa, four in Toronto, Canada, nine in Cape Town, Africa, 21 in Mozambique, 91 in New Guinea. Seven received the Holy Ghost there. And four in Botswana, Africa, giving us 348 souls. You know, brothers and sisters, God is good to the church. You know, the other night, some one of the ministers said, let's give Pastor Jennings a hand, but let us stand and give God a hand. Let us give God a hand for his goodness to all of us. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. God Almighty is certainly is worthy. Thank you, brothers and sisters. 
Beautiful text this morning that came in. Uh, Pastor Myers did a good job. We sent them to New Guinea. And they sent pictures of so many going down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. I had a whole line of about maybe 30 or 40 pastors and all of them wants to be a part of the truth of God message. Which is a blessing God knows. Now, I want to just uh, tell our brothers and sisters, our international holy convocation, the dates have been changed from July 14th through the 17th. And we wanted to have it in Charlotte, but the dates were taken and we can't have it in headquarters yet because the main auditorium is not complete. So by God's blessing, we're going to be back right here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Instead of three days, it'll be a four-day meeting. Now, the church, the church, want to give us, on that Saturday, an appreciation day. I guess the church appreciate the 38 years we've been working. Mm -hmm. One of the secretaries kind of teased me. She said, what kind of anniversary gift you want after 38 years? I said, something plain and simple. All I want to hear is the testimonies from the people how this word of God affect their life. So, there will be a room set up. And you continue to watch the telecast and go to the website. All of it will be on the website eventually. There will be blocks of time. Tony Harvin will be interviewing all those that want to be interviewed by him. Brother C. Rock will be interviewing all those that want to be interviewed by him. Dan DeMann will be interviewing all those that want to be interviewed by him. And I want to get Minister Lino to interview all our Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters. We also are going to try to fly our brother in from the Philippines. Some of you are familiar with this website. He's been promoting this program, Brother Jairu, from the Philippine Islands. This message has been far reaching. And I remember when we first started our telecast, we only had a 30 minute slot. And we only would broadcast maybe once in a year or twice. And now we have over 50 something television stations. And webcasting almost every week. And I remember when people would be baptized, five here, 10 here, 15 there, 20 there, and now 
God knows they done went way into the hundreds and done turned into the thousands. So we, the church, have a lot to thank God for. So I want to say to all of my viewers, to what America, Europe, the Asiatic countries, Asiatic areas, Australia, New Guinea, New Zealand, Canada, all of you that have been affected by this message, I would love to see you in person. Make plans now. July 14th through the 17th. We'll be back here at this convention center here in Greensboro, North Carolina for our international holy convocation. I hope to see our international brothers and sisters from all across Africa and all across Europe, from Holland, from the Netherlands, from Australia, from England, from France, from Paris, from the United Arab Emirates, from Arabia. I hope to see all of you here. I would like to know what did God do for you? Because God did something for all of us. And, uh, and this part of the auditorium, we can hold over 2,000. We got more than 2,000 here now, and those back walls open up. So we actually can hold up to 5,000. Amen. Now, before going any further, my wife waving her hand, she would remind me, I asked her to remind me. I want to dedicate that song before I forget to Mother Mildred Johnson for her 92nd birthday. God bless you, Mother Johnson. God bless you, Mother. Thank God for you. 92 years. That's a blessing, isn't it? Amen. May God forever keep you and preserve you is our prayer that when the Lord comes, you'll be one of the ones counted worthy to go back with them. As I said before, many men talks about the coming of the Lord but have failed to prepare the people for that arrival. It is written, prepare to meet thine God. And our convocation is centered around celebrating the greatness of God. You can never have enough celebration about God. He made the heavens, he made the earth. It is written, give us rain and fruitful season. Everything we own and everything we have is lent to us. Just for a period of time we have to enjoy whatever it is until God step in. And that is appointed time, if it's his will, clock us out. But while we are here, we want to give God our best. Amen. Are you listening? We want to give God the firstlings. That's what Abel gave, the firstlings. The best representation that we can possibly give God Everything within us. God be our help, but this is what we desire to do. So I hope to see many, many of the brothers and sisters from the Bahama Islands, from Jamaica, from Trinidad, throughout the many areas of the Caribbean. I hope to see you in from Korea. Our International Holy Convocation will be in July 
of this year, 2022, 14th through the 17th. I'm looking forward to hear our newly formed International Mass Choir. The Truth of God International Mass Choir. Amen. I'm still rejoicing over the brass band last night. Amen. I was rejoicing earlier when they played, but last night, amen, I, I heard exactly what I wanted to hear. Brother Joe, he can, he know what I'm talking, and Derek know what I'm talking. I know Damien know what I'm talking. Amen. It sounds so good. It's a beautiful thing to wish up God in spirit and in truth. I wasn't around when many of the old time bishops was living. And Dan and I often talk about this. We wasn't around then, but God gave us that old time religion. And a gospel that's never outdated. Viewers, and to you that are here, the truth of God is a gift from God to the world. The message that God gave Noah in his day, not only was it a warning, but it was a gift. It was simply an opportunity that God gave man for self-correction, self-modification, to give man a fair chance to run for his life. We all can bear witness that God is giving all of us a fair chance. A fair chance. Viewers, if you're still alive after COVID done hit, so rich in God. And after all the variants and the changes that this disease is taking place now, and you're still here. Have you not realized that God, glory to God, is still giving you a fair chance? Am I right, I said? Giving you a fair chance to come over here with him. He don't care how rich you are because you don't have more than him. You have money and yet God have you. He don't care what you own, what you possess. He know he can take it quicker than you can walk or think. Everything you have when you realize and respect the fact it is lent to you. Your husband, your wife, your house, your money, the clothes on your back, the breast in your body, and all of it is just lent to you. Yeah. Scripture says, The Lord giveth. Mm -hmm. all right. The Lord taketh away. But he's still blessed. Blessed. Be the name of the, of the Lord. Viewers, what do you have that's worth losing your soul over? What will you give in exchange for your soul? What will you swap your life for? A man who have nothing to die for, it is only because he don't have nothing in his life worth living for. All of us have different backgrounds, get me. Some here are ex-drug lords, ex-drug dealers. Used to sell drugs on the streets of America. Used to be gang bangers. Prostitutes. 
madams who own their own brothels, rapists, extortioners, arsoners, murderers, liars, in and out of jail, disrespectful to mothers and fathers, living homosexual lifestyles. You may say, you got all that kind of people coming to church, I wouldn't have it no other way. He told his apostles, I will make you fishers of men. In other words, the apostles wasn't sent to target one kind of fish. I will make you fishers of men. Another scripture says, you shall catch men. And God knows we caught a whole lot of them. By God's help, God baked the hook and the line has gone out to all the earth. The Bible says in the words to the end of the world. I would not want a message if I use the term that's a white collar message. It only brings so-called uppity uppity folk who think they have no sin who think they never done no wrong. Give me Titus. Yes. We want to take a walk down memory lane. Are you listening? It's time for all of us to reflect. If you look at where God brought you from, you will have a better appreciation where God have you now. Are you getting what I'm telling you? This is why the scripture says, judge yourselves. Nobody can afford to look down upon the other based upon their past because nobody's past is clean. Am I right, I said? You may say, oh, I never did this. I never did that. Did you do something? Yes, that's enough. Titus. Titus chapter 3 and we're at verse 3. Follow me in your Bible. I want to educate you. Viewers, get this, get this, get this. Titus chapter 3 and at verse 3. All right, let's have it. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Let the church say amen. amen. Say it louder than you're saying it. We can identify with that short sentence. Oh, yes. Sometime Foolish. in our life, what state of mind were we in? Foolish. What was our behavior? Foolish. What was our actions? Foolish. Glory to God. We ourselves, and that includes Brother Paul. That's right. He may have been an apostle when this was written, but the word of God itemized his past. First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 13. Listen. Who was before. Here, chapter and verse again, Will. First Timothy chapter 1 and we're at verse 13. Uh -huh. Who was before I blessed Who was Eva. before. Before what? Before my eyes came open. Glory to God of my understanding was enlightened. That's right. Before I heard that excellent voice speak from heaven. What was he? A blasphemer. He cursed God. That's right. And he cursed God's people. 
It isn't that he didn't know it was one God. He did. I want to say, well, how can you say that? Because he was a Benjamite. That's right. Came out of the first tribe that gave Israel a king. Benjamin is the youngest son of Jacob. The youngest tribe. Yeah. And coming out the tribe of Benjamin, being a Jew, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, they knew. Glory to God. Hear, O Israel. The Lord, our God, was one. Brother Paul knew this. He was taught according to the perfect manner of the law by Gamaliel, who was a doctorate of the law, a Pharisee, being taught according to the perfect manner of the law, but his revelation came from the spirit of the living God. That's right. He did not receive that of man, nor was he taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's right. So when we reflect back at ourselves, the very first sentence. We ourselves also were sometimes foolish. I guarantee you can count so many areas of life where you was a fool. Fool. And if it wasn't from God, you'll still be a fool. That's right. Many of the, the Bible says you reap what you sow. Many of us are reaping today oh, yes. as a result of being foolish, foolish. years ago. That's right. Too foolish to listen to that good advice. That's right. Too foolish to hear wise counsel. That's right. Too foolish to listen to your mother. Yeah. Too foolish to submit to the instructions of your father. And as a result of being so foolish, thinking you was a man when you was nothing but a fool. Thinking you was a woman when you was nothing but a fool. Many today is dealing with mental and emotional anguish and long-term regret. That's right. Why didn't listen? A wise son. Here, 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 here now. Proverbs chapter 13 and we're at verse 1. Listen. A wise son. A wise son. Heareth his father's instruction. Hold it. Many of us didn't have wise fathers. And in many cases, the problems that came in our life was because of the instructions of an unwise father. That's right. Many was allowed to smoke okay. right in front of father. He taught you how to drink. He taught you how to run women. He taught you how to play numbers. He taught you how to gamble. He taught you how to cheat. He taught you how to lie. You was in a pool hall with him. You slept with his own girlfriend. That's right. So man, let me talk to you. It is written, the Lord says, let us make man. In our image after our likeness. So God made man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. So if God made man in his image, it is not just the form, the shape, and the fashion. Man also inherited God's character. The characteristics of God, the thinking of God, the deeds of God was within Adam until Adam fell. Why you think God came looking for him? 
where Adam fell, there was a change in his nature. So as a result of his fall, he became a misrepresentative of God's character. Because the fall of Adam was the uprise of sin. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. It was the fall of Adam that resurrected and introduced the sin within the earth. So here comes God. Adam! Where art thou? Adam! Where art thou? Where art thou? I know where you're at. That's right. Because I know all things. If you know where I'm at, why call me? I'm going to call you in a way. You know you've done something you shouldn't have done. What was Adam to God? What was their relationship? Father and son. And son. Give me the book of Luke. St. Luke chapter 3 and verse 38. Before you, before you get Luke, Malachi. I got to establish who God is. That's it. And how many fathers that we have. That's right. Then I want the book of Luke, which will show you the relationship between Adam and God. In Malachi chapter 2 and at verse 10. I want everybody to follow me. I want to take my time and soak you. That's right. Get this. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 10. Yes. Have we not all one father? Have we not all one father? Hath not one God created Hath us? Hath not one God created us? Created us. Us. So God is our father. God is our creator. That's right. Now let's see what title do Adam have. Luke chapter 3 and at verse 38. Follow me now. Luke chapter 3 and verse 38. Yes. Which was the son of Enos. Which was the son of Enos. Which was the son of Seth. Which was the son of Seth. Which was the son of Adam. Which was the son of Adam and who was Adam? Wh which was the son of God. Are you listening? Amen. Adam was the first earthly human to bear the title son of God. Son of God. He was made in God's image. That's right. Not that he was a son of God like Jesus. No. To redeem. No. To save. He was a fallen son. That's right. One son fell. And the other one has to redeem us from the fall. That's right. So here come Adam's father. <laughs> That's right. Adam! And they heard the voice of the Lord God. Do you hear this? In Genesis chapter 3 and at verse 8. They heard the voice of the Lord God. Walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Wait a minute. They heard the voice. But what was the movement of the voice? Walking in the garden. That means the sound of God was approaching the man. That's right. Approaching. That's right. Get me now. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. Yes. In the cool of the day. Uh -huh. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. What? Adam and his wife hid themselves. You know, if you're right, you ain't got no reason to hide. Right. <laughs> if you're right, you don't have no reason to hide. That's right. You know, when you was raised up in a disciplined home, when you know you're going to get it. You hate to hear your father's voice or your mother's voice. Amen. My job as a child, all of us had chores. It wasn't like it is today for some strange reason. A lot of parents think their children is too cute to do chores. Giving your children chores is training them to be responsible. Right. When I came up, we had to clean the toilet. I mean clean it. Put Comet down there or Ajax and get that scrub brushing. Get all up under the rim and get all around the basin. 
had to clean the spindles of the staircase and go outside and scrub the steps. Then mother and father were house inspectors. That's right. <laughs> so my job, I had to take the trash out. And even our outside trash cans wasn't allowed to be dirty. Because if anything spilled in that trash can, my father told me I had to put comic in it and scrub the trash can because he said even though it's trash in there, the can shouldn't stink. So I had to scrub the trash can. And if I, many times I hypocrited, Trash night, I think, was Monday then. Sometime I would try to go to bed early and pretend like I'm asleep. But glory to God, Father laid law. And he was not going to move from that law. And I remember one beautiful summer night. I recognized my father walk. I saw that silhouette coming down Broad Street. You know, he had a stroll, a natural stroll. And I saw him, and I knew I didn't take the trash. I was playing football, and they threw me the ball. When I saw that silhouette, it went right past me. I ran in the house, got out my clothes, got in bed. <laughs> ah, thinking my father didn't see me. He took his time, came in the house like nothing happened. Came straight to my room. I heard that voice walking. Walking. <laughs> walking. Walking. Came in my room. Because the bags of trash, you just on the sidewalk in front of your house. I was, wasn't out. He came in the room. Nicky! I'm. <laughs> Nicky! He opened the door and came right at the bed, got in my ear. You ain't sleep. <laughs> he said, if you don't get out this bed, I'm going to beat you out. Right then, something came over me. I got out that bed like I had the quickening power. Why? Because a responsible parent is your judge. Instructions as a child, you won't be able to comprehend the reason why certain instructions is given. And because of lack of knowledge, you may rebel. Because of your narrowness of vision. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child. I spoke as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So a child of mine cannot think. That's right. As an adult, you five, you ten. No. Are you getting me? Amen. And sometimes when we become young men, teens and 20s, our body grow, but our mind don't. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. So the Lord called Adam. That's right. Adam heard that voice. I heard thy voice in, in the garden. I heard thine voice in the garden. And I was afraid. <laughs> Amen. I was what? I was afraid. I was scared. Because I was naked. And I hid myself. I was naked. Yeah. And I hid myself. Now, you that are here, you that are watching. Watch. You're hearing God's voice now. That's right. That's what draw you here, not me. That's right. It is not Pastor Jennings that got you here. It's no. God within us. That's it. For God tells his preachers, it is not you that speaketh, but the voice That's it. of my father that speaketh in you. God is talking to you, sinner. That's right. He's calling you, Call sinner. Him. That's right. That's right. You know it's you. Amen. 
You're naked. Oh, yeah. That's right. I said, wait a minute, Pastor Jesus. I ain't naked, man. I got a, my, my suit is custom tailored. It cost me $5,000. You're naked. Naked. What do you mean you're naked? You're in sin. That's right. Even though you have on natural clothes, God wants to dress you with his word. That's it. Want to put a helmet on your head. Yeah. Helmet of salvation. That way it'll contain your thought process. That's right. Want to put a breastplate over your chest so your emotions can be well protected. Want to give you a shield, which is the shield of faith that you may be able to repel the arrows of Satan. That's right. And you want to take your feet and have them shod with the preparations of the gospel That's it. of peace. Because as it stands down, your feet use a traveling confused man and a traveling confused woman. That's right. But if God put peace in your steps, peace. a good man's steps is ordered by the Lord. That's right. Because he directs the path. Amen. Are you listening? And the Lord God called unto Adam. God is calling you now. That's right. Human family, human family, God is calling you. That's right. So here you have the Apostle Paul saying, we ourselves. Also were sometimes foolish. Having babies out of wedlock. Mm. Amen. Amen. One, two, three, four, five. And then just marry the girl, you don't really love her. You just do it because you don't look bad and now some, some other uh, vessel <laughs> come along and you like uh, that vase, or as uh, uh, up in the up will say, that vase. Vase, <laughs> that's right, that vase. You like that ceramic jar. That's right. Better than the other one. That's right. Foolish. Foolish. Too young to be a father, too incompetent to be a husband, that's right. But yet, make babies. That's right. Too young to be a mother. Too young to be a wife. Yeah. But yet, been seduced into marriage because he told you everything that you wanted to hear. That's right. Some women would not be married today if a responsible parent or responsible relative had vision and be able to tell her, no. That's right. He's good for nothing. For nothing. Some men would not be married today if they had a parent in their house that had insight and tell him, no. That's right. She is good. For nothing. Better it is to have no children. Listen. In the book of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4. We're still working under the first sentence. We ourselves. That's right. Sometime foolish. My God, man, that can take us to the evening oblation. Oh, yeah. Here's chapter and verse. In the book of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4 and at verse 1. Says what? Better it is to have no children. Better it is not to have no kids. And to have virtue. And to have virtue. For the memorial thereof is immortal. Amen. So now, in so many cases, you have mama, daddy drama. Yeah. Are you listening? That's right. So being foolish, judge yourselves. Yes. <laughs> Amen. He's fighting with it. <laughs> Judge yourselves. That's right. We ourselves sometimes foolish. Are you still foolish? Amen. In the midst of this teaching, are you still naive? That's right. That's right. So quick to give a sister money who you don't know. Yeah. Are you being hit up mm. for dollars? You think it's love. Yeah. Are you being foolish, brother, and proposing to three, four, five, six, six sisters in church? That's right. Playing a dirty game with the emotions of others. Amen. Foolish. Are you still foolish? That's it. Are you offering some sister money 
to pretend like you're there for her when you're just really there to visit her womb. Mm. That's right. That's right. The Holy Ghost says what? We ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Amen. Amen. If you were a fool, fool, when you was in the world, don't remain a fool in the truth of the gospel. That's right. Learn by your mistakes. That's right. See, sometimes, some folks say, I never want to fall. Falling is part of growth. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? You see, when we deal with these subjects, some of you get offended. Oh, man, he, he looking down on me. I ain't got time to look down on you. My job is to teach you and raise you up from the dead. That's right. Many of us are spiritually crippled. Don't know how to walk, so my job as a spiritual physician is to put biblical braces upon you. That's right. To train your structure of walking because you are bent by nature. That's right. And the scripture says he made man upright. Upright. So it takes a scriptural brace to strain out the bend in your nature. Hallelujah. You'll be slow next time taking his number. That's right. You'll be slow next time letting him drive your car. That's right. You'll be slow next time smiling and believing all that garbage come out of his mouth. Amen. That's right. That's right. Holy Ghost says what? We ourselves are. Where you at, son? I'm in the book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 20 and verse 29. Says what? Presents. Presents. And gifts. And gifts. Blind the eyes of the wise. Amen. Amen. Presents. Presents and gifts. And gifts. Blind the eyes of the wise. In modern terms, presents and gifts blind a sucker. <laughs> That's right. Some of you got pregnant years ago as a result of presence That's right. and gifts and gifts and the lack of maturity. That's right. You thought presence was love. You thought gifts was love because nobody was there to tell you that gifts and presence can be a form of manipulation That's right. and not love. That's right. Go ahead, man. Brothers. Go ahead. Sisters in the church should not be used by you. Yeah. A woman in the street should not be used by you. That's right. If you are a user of the female, you are not my brother, you're a pimp. That's right. Talk to me. That's right. That's right. If you are a pimp in the street, you should not be a pimp in church. Amen. If you use men in the street, that's right. You should not use men in church. That's right. That's the Holy right. Ghost says what? Presents and gifts. 
Blind the eyes of the wise. How can you propose to two and three and four sisters at one time? Yeah. Sister, if you know that a brother is talking to another sister with the intent to marry, back up. Back up. Out of respect to that relationship. That's right. If you're willing to ignore the fact that they are talking about marriage yeah. and still That's right. be his whole, mm. you have no respect for yourself Amen. nor for the sister in church. That's right. That's right. You brothers. You should be honored if you and the sister got in mind to get married and she want to save herself That's right. till marriage. That's right. But if you become frustrated because she wants to remain chaste and you drop a chaste virgin to get a leg open Jezebel. Go ahead. You ain't fit for a husband, not fit for a father, not fit for a brother in church. That's right. That's right. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. Talk to me. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. The Holy Ghost says what there? Presents and gifts. Presents. Presents. Sisters, don't accept gifts and presents from a brother you ain't interested in. That's right. All you doing is leading them on. Yeah. And then you complain to your local minister, brother so-and-so keep buying me this, keep buying me that, and while you're complaining, you wearing the scarf. <laughs> you wearing the blouse. That's right. If you really don't want to be bothered, you won't accept nothing from him. That's right. You sisters, stand up and stop being scared to open your mouth. If you want the man to leave you alone, tell him. Tell him. Talk to me. Amen. Tell him. Tell him. You can't accept scarves and blouses and skirts and shoes and then want to sit and bug your local minister all day. That's right. He bought me this, you see? You see? He, he bought me this, see? Oh, oh my God. Why does he keep doing this? I don't want to be bothered. Liar! Yeah. You mean to tell me you that cheap? You can't pass up shoes, skirt, and a blouse? Go ahead. Get a job and go to work and buy your own. That's right. That's right. Talk to me. That's right. That's right. If Amen. brothers are going to propose to three and four and five sisters, whoever marry him, you will cuss the day his mama carried him. That's right. That's right. Because he's too immature to respect any relationship. Really? That's right. Are you listening? Presents and gifts. And because of lack of fatherhood, because of lack of parenting, because of the absence of proper authority, many are married today, and if they could, they would go back in time. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, in the in, in past, she walked to him yes, and yes. saw. But now that she got knowledge, she go back in time. And if she see him, you can be miserable by yourself. That's right. You don't get married to be miserable. That's right. Know what you are investing in. You are investing in a who and a what. You may got who you want, but it may not be what you want. That's right. The right investment has to be the who and it has to be the what. The what. Because if you got the what, you're going to think about the who. Oh, yeah. And if you got the who, your what may be somewhere else. That's right. Right. Amen. Are you listening? Presents and gifts. Presents and gifts. Blind the eyes of the wise. Blind the eyes of the wise. And stop up his mouth. It does what? And stop up his mouth. It stops up his mouth. In it, other words, he's been so affected or she's been so affected by the presents and the gifts. She wants to say something, but she's looking at the presents and the gifts so right. much until she like, oh, well, if you want to do it, let him do it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And then some of you sisters doing the same thing, buying brothers things. There is that destroyeth its See, own soul. I was raised old school. To this day, to this day, to this day, I still have a problem with my wife buying me anything. And we've been together for 45 years. I got a problem. You know, I, I remember when she first bought me flowers, I, I felt funny. <laughs> You know, because I'm used to buying her flowers. And sometimes she'll say, what do you want for your birthday? I said, nothing. She, and, but I would go buy her and I would go. She said, listen, you give me something all the time. I said, I don't want nothing. I just want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> but some say, well, in a relationship, you should buy for each other. Buying don't strengthen your relationship. That's right. A good example, look at things some of you still have. And you ain't with him or her. Right. But now you have those things like trophies. That's right. Some of you behind the backs of them that spent the money on you, brag about them. Man, yeah, she brought me this. She did? Oh, well, she brought me this. She did? How much did yours cost? I don't know. She didn't tell me. Sometimes, sisters, he brought me, this. really? Oh, well, he brought me this. Really? Right. He brought me this. Really? He brought me this. Really? <laughs> he brought me this. Really? <laughs> he brought me this. And just keep going down the line. <laughs> Am I right, I said? Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Is everybody all right? Yeah. The Holy Ghost says what? Presents and gifts Presents blind the eyes of the wise. And gifts blind the eyes of the wise. And stop up his mouth. Stop up his mouth. That he cannot reprove. He can't reprove. That's right. He enjoyed them and had them so much. Don't say nothing. There is a gift that shall not profit thee. Gift chapter and verse. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 20 and at verse 10. There is a gift. That shall not profit thee. You won't gain from it. And there is a gift whose recompense is double. You sisters. Don't let no brother promise you marriage. And if he don't already promise somebody else and then promise somebody else. That's right. And then promise somebody else. Let me give you some wisdom. If you know he was already talking to a sister before he talked to you, before you welcome him in your life, and y'all in the same church, 
Go talk to the sister. Find out how soon was he telling her these things because he may have been telling her while he was with you. In other words, he had somebody on standby in case the other wouldn't work. He had somebody rebound. That's Street right. terms, player. Yeah. And when he is a player or she is a player, they have no respect for themselves. For a player is a person that's desperate for attention. And when a person is desperate for attention, don't be surprised how far down they will get just to get it. If any brothers in First Church is buying gifts yeah. to manipulate any sister, right. sit down. That's right. If you have proposed to two, three, and four, and five sisters, sit down. That's right. Amen. What happened to the amens? <laughs> Sister, if you have hit up five brothers' wallet with the same Jezebel story that you in need, and from five brothers you paid your rent, from another brother you paid your car, from another brother, you got this wardrobe. From another brother, you got that radio. Man. Use a user of men. That's right. And if you use men, you gonna reap what, what you, you sow. sow. What you sow. Now, some of y'all sisters are naive. And you're so naive when we teach hard like this because some of y'all ain't got no daddy. So we come along teaching you what your daddy should have told you. And as a result, some of y'all not having no father. So not say, I got a father, he live in the house. Some of y'all just got britches in the house. Amen. With nothing in them. Like the straw man going down the yellow brick road. <laughs> Straw man. Some of y'all didn't have no father to give you no instructions. And as a result of not having no father, you made bad decisions that you're dealing with right now. Right. And sometime as a result of not having no father, you know what you've done? Looked for love. Yeah. Think of the concept. You went looking for what you don't even comprehend. So what appeared to be love isn't. So a lot of men today is taking your bank account. That's right. You paying his rent. You paying his car note. You're working by the sweat of your brow to take care of a homemade bum. Bum who ain't got what it take to be a man, be a father, be a husband. And then got the nerve to want to quote some scripture to you. Shut up! That's right. That's right. You ain't willing to take care of your family? What kind of Bible verse got the right to come out of your mouth? That's right. You are nothing more than an infidel. In fact, you are an embarrassment to God. That's right. That's right. That's right. You don't marry no brother because he gave you three orgasms? Mm. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk to me. Amen. Go ahead.
Go ahead, brother. Amen. Go ahead, brother. One of the saddest things when you have a good sister. Yeah. I mean, good mind, soul, body, and spirit. Her character is on point. But she's chained to a dog. That's right. And all she can do is I woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yeah. A man is not a man because he got a beard. <laughs> no, no way. Some women got beards. <laughs> Amen. My brothers, years ago, and many of the older brothers and sisters can bear witness, years ago, if you had in mind to marry a young lady, your parents wanted to meet her parents. Yeah. Because they wanted to know what kind of house he or she is coming out of. That's right. Are you listening? Man. Please don't assume because a person come to first church Amen. that it's going to make them no. a good husband oh, no. or a good wife. It's only if they take the teaching and apply it to themselves and evolve around that teaching. Well, I, I go with Pastor Jenna is that. So what? So what? What are you learning? What are you learning? What kind of man are you? That's right. What kind of sister are you? A good woman is just as hard to come by as it is a camel that got five humps and from each hump is a different flavor ice cream. <laughs> Amen. Are you listening? Wonderful. The pickings are thin. Oh yeah. The assembly line is a lot of bugs in today's production. Oh yes. And my job as a minister is to get the bugs out and some get so offended that they leave the truth of God and go to churches that don't teach nothing. Nothing. And when you go to churches that don't teach nothing, you have no discipline and you don't know how to choose. That's right. Sisters have asked me, Pastor Jennings, or have said to me, I'm looking for a husband. I tell all of them, you're doing it wrong. You ain't got no business looking. The word says, whoever find a wife. Find a wife. You have to allow yourself to be found. You don't go looking. Who so found you have to allow wife. yourself to be found. That's right. That way when someone trying to evaluate you, see what they bring to the table. That's why we teach our women, don't sit and wait for a man to do for you what you can do for yourself. It ain't nothing wrong with having a job. It ain't nothing wrong with going to college. You don't drop out of college just to marry some man. That's right. And don't allow yourself to get knocked up and get pregnant and you about to get your masters. Now you rock about baby on the treetop. That's right. And when the wind blow, he ain't around. Not around. Go ahead, man. So now you're stuck. Baby one arm. But you can finish your courses. Go online. Adjust the bottle. <laughs> That's right. Go online. That's right. 
Man can't rise your back unless it's bent. Amen. You know, I've had brothers that used to be in first church when I preach like this have actually said he work on the men too much. Only a coward low That's down coward. thing. Amen. A real woman don't want no whining man. That's right. That's right. God said he made man. Man. Making a man is more than making 13 babies. Oh, yes. What good is making 13 babies if you can't take care of two? That's right. You got all these kids? Take care of them. Yeah. Don't sit and wait for your wife to do everything if you're there. That's right. Wash your boys. That's right. Let That's me right. work on that. Keep your kids clean. Yeah. Don't take them to the hospital with a dry snot, boogie-filled nose. Go ahead. Go ahead. Your three-month baby should not be smelling like a bum in the street. That's right. Wash them. That's right. Not once a week, every day. You got to get under his neck. You got to clean all the nooks and crannies. Go ahead. Some know how to have babies, but don't know how to take care of them or clean them. Keep getting little wipes from CVS. <laughs> Put a little soap on a soft rag. Get a little plastic pan they got them. Water and test the water. Make sure it's not too hot. Know how to hold your baby and wash it. Go ahead. Don't send your child. Listen, even though we teach modest apparel, that don't mean your child got a little like raggedy hair and Andy. Go ahead. Keep them toenails and fingernails clean. Keep Go ahead. them toenails and fingernails clipped. It don't make no sense. The wife and the husband is all suited down and the children are like a train wreck. Amen. And you run them around in some spirit. Like you got some spirit. <laughs> Preach it, brother. Go ahead, man. Are you listening? Go ahead. Go ahead. We ourselves. We ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Want to make sure they get every drop. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Are you still a fool? Amen. If many men and women can rewind the clock, they ain't stopping at her. And they ain't stopping at him. No. They're going to go by them so fast you may hear a noise. Pew. <laughs> Pew. Gone. Gone. If you done made that mistake and you're married now, you can't, you know, you can do until he die. You can't speed up the process. That's right. But I can, by the grace of God, teach to protect those who's not married. That's right. See, the mistake that you make is because you think everyone that come to church have God on their mind. That is not the truth. No. When the Lord said you shall catch men, he never said all men going to be honest. No. I make you fishes of men. You got sharks in that net. Sharks. Oh, yes. You got stingrays in that net. You got hammerheads in that net. That's right. You got octopus in that net. All kinds. All kinds. So get out of this naive mentality because truth is here. The devil isn't. Heaven had more truth than this. Oh, yes. But the devil was there. Was there. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? 
That's right. Back to Titus. Back to Titus chapter 3 and verse 3. Everybody all right? For we ourselves you also. Brothers, mm -hmm. that's proposed into two and three and four and five sisters. Cut that stuff out. Cut it out. And you sisters that's holding ministers up, complaining and whining about what he gave you and all this stuff, and yet you accepting again and keep saying, he won't stop buying it. Oh, shut up. You know what you're doing. Amen. Woman up and just tell him, leave me alone. That's right. I don't know how to tell him. How should I say it? I don't want to hurt his feelings. He say, a man, tell him. Tell him. You care about his feelings. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 20 and verse 22. They make every type of dumb excuse and then hold the minister up. Ooh, I thought he, ooh, he broke my heart. Ooh, uh, I, I got his scarf and ooh. Oh, shut up. That's right. That's true. All you had to do is tell him, leave me alone. Amen. And Don't the worry five times and then give it back. Are you listening? That's right. I have three daughters. A lot of time when I buy my wife flowers, I buy my daughter's flowers. And the reason why I buy my daughter's flowers that way, if they ever meet a man, they give them flowers, they got it already. I go buy my wife roses, I buy my daughters them roses, give them different colors. I may buy my daughters roses them from the market and may go to the flower shop and get my wife. My... <laughs> Doesn't matter, they're still flowers. They're flowers. <laughs> still smell good. Are you listening? Amen. Some women make bad decisions because they had a no good father and they run looking for love. And as a result of such, some become mentally and emotionally abused. Even though we're in the truth of God and it is our objective to raise our children up in the truth, that doesn't mean you make a, you use a slave driver. That's right. In other words, you have to know how to present this truth. Amen. Your daughter start being interested in boys. That don't mean the devil is in her. That's the right. devil's not in her. God put it in her. Yeah. You're born with it. Right. When that young man start being interested in the girls, Devil ain't put that in him. God put it in him. I did it. If he started being interested in them boys, the devil put that in him. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. Amen. So then. Don't be afraid to tell them, leave me alone. That's right. I don't want nothing to do with you. You don't allow yourself to be used. And the only reason why you tolerate it is because of a few greenbacks. Your dignity should outweigh a dollar. Right. Very, and this is, and this is God knows truth. Very few people are sincere in helping you and don't want nothing in return. Very few. I mean, an individual is like that, you would think they fell from heaven. Because most people have an objective yeah. or a hidden agenda. By the time you find out what it is, it's too late. Too late. Never put yourself in position that you can be blackmailed. Yeah. And any time a brother will try to blackmail a brother or a sister, or a sister will try to blackmail a sister or a brother, 
Are you supposed to be in church? You was a child of hell. That's right. Don't allow no one to lure you into their gossiping life. You don't know him. You don't know her. Shut your mouth up about him and about her. That's right. We speak that which we do what? No. And we testify to what? What we've seen. Hold it right there. Because sometimes what you see isn't what you're looking at. You can see a brother standing there conversing, talking to a sister. You may see the sister hand him a piece of paper. That don't mean they're exchanging phone numbers. That's right. That don't mean they're trying to go out for a date. It could be a piece of paper he dropped. Are you listening? That's right. Internet and social media. Go ahead. If you're in the church, keep it clean. Clean. If you can't keep it clean, shut it down. That's right. You don't get on social media voicing your personal uh, arguments and confrontations with a brother or a sister in church. No. I dealt with a case like that a few weeks ago in Philadelphia. Brother went and put on a suit, uh, not a suit, a shirt and tie. He don't even wear a shirt and tie to church. Good. Shirt and tie. And blast one of my sisters who done nothing to him. Good. And I had to break off several scriptures in him. And I mean, I broke him off. He probably can still fill him. Social media is not to be used in an ungodly way. That's right. Where you bring a reproach upon the church and yourself. That's right. Get your personal trash off your website. Yeah. You've got to be a fool putting out your own personal business. Even your pictures of where you was a sinner. Yeah. Cleavage showing, earrings, lipstick, yeah. all on social media posing. Posing. <laughs> Are you listening? Amen. Amen. You ain't advertising your website deliberately with a shirt on so when you bend down at your screen the mm. separation of your personal Red Seas are seen. <laughs> Israel ain't walking through you. <laughs> That's right. Am I right? <laughs> That's right. Go ahead. Some of you brothers was faithful in coming to church. Now you don't met some sister that got you leaving church early. Yeah. Got you missing church. Missing church. In other words, she don't rip God out of your life. Yeah. Anytime she can rip God out of your life, you're not a man. Amen. Don't let no woman rip God out of your life and don't let no, woman, no man rip God out of yours. That's right. Very few people that you will meet in life will have your best interest in heart. heart. I'm telling you this of a truth. God knows they just as rare as E.T.'s eating grits in your kitchen. <laughs> rare. Rare. A person like that is a jewel. Oh, yeah. Are you listening? In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 20 and verse 22. That's what? There is that destroyeth his own soul. Wait a minute. Say what? There is there that. There is that. Destroyeth his own soul. That destroyeth himself. Through bashfulness. Through what? Through bashfulness. Through bashfulness. How can you destroy yourself by being too shy? 
Sometimes by you shutting up is what caused you to get into stuff. Right. Learn to speak up for yourself. That's right. You don't trust him? Tell him. Tell him. Don't pretend he asks you, do you love me? <laughs> oh, well. If you know you don't love him, tell him. That's right. Play around with it. Tell him, no, I don't love you. Yeah. Are you in love with me? No. <laughs> You're just a brother to me. That's it. That's right. Nothing more, nothing less. No. <laughs> That's right. And mean it. Amen. You don't love her, tell him. Tell him. Brother, I got a question I want to ask you. I want to ask you, I want to ask you. Do, 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 do. Do you? All that. All that. Just ask the man. <laughs> do you love me? Before you accept this, yes. Love don't begin with you. If he don't love himself, he's incompetent to love you. That's right. If she don't love herself, she cannot love you. I love you. Without self-love, that means you don't have what it takes to give it to someone else. Yeah. Jesus said, love your neighbor as what? As yourself. As yourself. Man. Many of you found out too late that he didn't love you. Yeah. Your gown is hanging up now and turned yellow. Can't fit it no more. You wish you would have found out that he was a bum. That's right. You wish you would have bum. found out that she was nothing more than a materialistic user. Man. You wish you would have found out that he was physically violent. Yeah. You wish you would have found out that she was a psychopath. That's right. Because a lot of these things may sound funny, but you'd be surprised how much is kept under wraps long enough just so they can say, I do. I and do. then when they say, I do, in their mind, they take, I own you too far. Yeah. They treat you like you some nigga on a plantation. That's right. And he'll verbally and physically beat you like a slave. That's right. As long as he can keep you scared, Go ahead. you in bondage. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. I know some don't like what I said. Go ahead. I don't care if you don't. If any of you men got a problem with it, because you're guilty. Yeah. Because you beat your own wife. Yeah. And if you beat your wife, you're not a man. Go ahead. Talk to me. Go ahead. What kind of man are you that I grab your wife by the collar, push her up against the wall? Bump up against her and tell her, you better back up. Yeah. You better back up. Anytime a man tell you, woman, these words, if you was a man, what yeah. I'd do to you, he's telling you. Tell he wants to do you physical harm. Yeah. How you going to beat your wife and then when she don't sleep with you, you want to call scripture. I got power over your body. You are nothing but a bum. That's right. That's right. Why don't you have power to restrain yourself? Take your hands off her collar. Go ahead. Get your hands off her neck. Get out of her face. Talk to me. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. You slap your wife. Go ahead. You beat your wife. Go ahead. Don't do nothing in First Church. Nothing. 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 
Go ahead. I got power over oh your body. Why don't you restrain yourself? That's right. Get yeah. your hands off her neck. Your hands off her. Stop shoving her against the wall. Go ahead, man. Stop threatening her with knives and guns. Yeah. Then you want to quote some scripture. You got to give it to me. Bible said that the husband shall do benevolence to the, the wife, wife and the wife to the husband. You I do th- your part, she'll do her part. Yeah. Are you listening? Amen. Go ahead, brother. Are you listening? Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. A lot of this female abuse go on in the apostolic churches. Yeah. Because the pulpit had made the female a stomping mat for men. Amen. So from the pulpit, the female ain't nothing but a cook and a sex machine. That's right. You have no intelligence, no nothing. That's why we teach our women, before that man come in your life, preach it, brother. Get a job. Have your own established no. bank account. That way, when he walk, you can still talk. Amen. Don't you sit there and let no man stand over you straddling over you like you some man in the street and slap you around. That's right. And then quote scripture. Get that bum off of you. That's right. And if you're in the church and don't stop, I will throw you out. Throw you out. Throw you out. Get out of here. That's right. Get out. That's right. Hit the road, Jack. Hit the road, Jack. Don't come back no more. No more. That's right. How is it it makes you feel like a man? Well, Pastor Jennings, I saw my daddy beat up my mama. So that means you have to do it? Man, putting your hands on a woman is a choice. Putting your hands on a woman is a choice. She can't hardly breathe and you choking her out. That's right. And then when she get a bottle and break it over your head, you want to bring her in my office? Amen. You are a one and she didn't get a whole milk truck. <laughs> you beating your wife and, Be- and you come to first church? Come to first church. Amen. And then when music get going, you. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right, I say? Yeah. woman gonna keep sitting around letting you hit her? No way. And then she cooking for you? Have you lost your mind? She's cooking for you. And you beating her? And now you wonder why your clothes is getting too big? Because you shrinking away. You first sit at the table and she now got you thinking she's scared of you. Give me my food. Get on out the room. I want you to eat with me. A few months later. A few more months later. <laughs> Women that are washing. Wonderful, brother. You do not have to tolerate no man being you. No. I don't care if he's a pastor in the church. 
That's right. And any man try to quote the scripture. I dare any of you having a matter against another. Against another. Go before the law. Dare any of under, you. Listen at this. First Corinthians chapter six and at verse one. I want to block every loophole they try to use. That's right. First Corinthians chapter six and verse one. Now, when you go on social media, watch how many negative comments are made from men about this message because they are male chauvinistic bums. That's right. When God said, let us make man, that's what the truth of God is designed for, is to make real men. Right. The Holy Ghost says what? Dare any of you. Dare you. Having a matter Having against, a matter against a, another, another, go to law before the unjust. Go before who? The unjust. The unjust. And not before the saints. And not before the saints. So this is where these church women beaters would do. They'll quote this scripture. When she say, I'm taking you to court. You, he'll say, you can't take me to court because the Bible forbids you. That scripture don't apply. If you take note of the language of the scriptures, it never said you can't take them to court. It's a certain kind of court you can't take them to. That's right. Listen closely. Dare any of you. Dare. Turn Williams up. I don't want him to slip on this. Amen. Dare. Dare any of you. Any of you. Having a matter against a matter another. Against another. Go to law before the unjust. Oh. You That's just it. can't go where the unjust. In other words, they don't judge the matter fairly. That's right. Because you got a lot of crooked judges. That's right. And a lot of crooked lawyers. Right. Because now I got to balance that out with the other scripture that talk about the law. That's right. And see who the law is made for. That's right. I want you to get this, you old computerized crooks. Knowing this. Give chapter and verse. First Timothy chapter one, and I'm at verse nine. What is it? Knowing this. Knowing this. That the law is not made for a righteous the man. The law ain't made for a righteous man. But for the lawless. But for the lawless. And disobedient. And what? And disobedient. You beating your wife, you are lawless and you're hardhead. That's right. For the ungodly. What? And for sinners. What for, else? For unholy. Ain't nothing holy about you beating your wife. And profane. That's right. So to all the women, save and unsaved. That's right. Don't let no man scare you up where you subject yourself to physical abuse and then try to top it off by quoting Bible. Quoting Bible with it. He's handling the word of God deceitfully. Deceitfully. That's why you couldn't pay some men to follow us. That's true. We break backs and spines with Bible. <laughs> That's right. That's right. My wife and I have been together since 14 years old. We have had heated arguments, but I've never laid a hand on her. Wonderful. Never. Wonderful. And I never will. Amen. Someone said, suppose she hit you. I ain't gonna hit her, I ain't gonna lay a hand on her. Wonderful. Don't get no ideas now. <laughs> I ain't gonna put my hand on her. She hit me, I may bob. <laughs> I bob while I'm walking out the door. <laughs> eh? If it's gonna be, some blows, I'd rather that it come from her right. to me. But i never bring it to her as long as I live. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Bro. Titus chapter three. Back in Titus chapter three and verse three. What time do I have, brothers? 2.5. Plenty of time, brother? All right, come on. I, I, hope, I hope this is helping you. Yeah. There's always room for improvement. Oh, yes. And if you are afraid to better yourselves, then you are afraid to be saved. Right. And sometimes what keeps us from bettering ourselves is the company we keep. A positive person 
cannot afford to constantly be around a negative demon. That's right. Because if you want to go forward, he or she will either try to hinder, block your path, or always gonna try to discourage you or pull you down because their mindset is not to go nowhere and they don't want you to go nowhere either. Right. The Holy Ghost says what? For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Sometime foolish. foolish. Disobedient. Oh yes. Oh yes. Hard head. Hard head. Disobedient. Stubborn as a bull in Africa. That's right. <laughs> Parents tried to tell you something, but you was too much of a man or a woman. I often think of the case in Philadelphia a few years ago, a young girl, I think it was in Yaton, Pennsylvania. My wife and I was watching her on the news one night. Her mother told her not to go out. She went out and didn't come back. By the time they found her, I believe she had found her in a dumpster. Yep. And if I'm not mistaken, she was either 13 or 15. And if you listen at the news today, you're almost spiraling depression. Oh, yeah. The amount of young kids who's just outside playing, getting shot, and then the ones that's doing the shooting, 13, 12, 11. There was just a case, I believe, in Philadelphia where there was two kids in the back of a car. One was four and one was two. two. And I believe it was the four that shot the two or either the two that shot the four. Yeah. And shot the fool. How in the world can a two-year-old shoot somebody that's four? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, you may hate me all you want, viewers, but these are the subjects of today that need to be preached every day. That's right. And any time a church or religion don't want us to speak against it is because they want you to be ignorant and left in the dark. And any time a husband complain about this, mm. any man that's an abuser of women who is not going to stay in first church because he will not take it being reprimanded or corrected unless he wants to change. That's right. Preach against women using men. Some women get upset and they get out of here. Amen. Because we, we're breaking up the game. Yeah. Yeah. You multi-proposal men like you Don Juan. <laughs> That's right. It's a disgrace. Yeah. A man should not be able to show his teeth. <laughs> and next thing you know, you believe everything he said. That's right. It is written, a man is known by his look. By his look. A man may be known by his look. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19 and verse 29. And some of us don't even know what we're looking at. True. That's why some of us are in the predicament that we're in. We didn't know what we was looking at. Here you're not married and got a mind to talk to a brother or he's talking to you. And the first thing he mentioned, he wanted to join your bank account. Hmm. I don't even hardly know the catch yet. Well, let, let's, get, let, let's combine money. Or what you do is let me take all your money and put it in my account. That's right. You don't work 20 years to save up your money or longer. And the first thing he want to attack is your account. Your account. And then some of y'all, you know, you be manipulated by this, someone misusing the scripture of helpmate. And he ain't got no credit, so he used yours and put you in debt. Yeah. If you can turn back the clock, you'll be in the time machine and probably never get off of it. That's right. That's right. Again, maturity is of a necessity. Spiritual maturity and natural. Because it helps you to judge things correctly. Yeah. Real quick so we can knock off. Back in Titus chapter 3 and verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. What else? Disobedient. Mm -hmm. Deceived. Oh. Oh, yes. He bought you flowers and you thought it was Gabriel's cousin. That's right. He bought you a dress and you start hyperventilating. Hyperventilating. Start gasping for air, going through convulsions, crying uncontrollably. <laughs> 
And all he did was bought your address. Your address. Amen. Or stole it. <laughs> Amen. 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 Get this. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Yes. Disobedient. Disobedient. Deceived. Tricked. Serving, serving diverse lusts and, lust and pleasures. Living, living in malice and envy. Malice and jealousy. Hateful. Hateful. And hating one another. And hating each other. But after, but that, after that, the kindness, the kindness and love of God our Savior, the love of God our Savior toward, man appeared, toward man appeared, not by not works of righteousness which we have done, we done, but according to his mercy he saved us. According to what? To his mercy. What did he do by his mercy? He saved us. How did he do it? By the washing of regeneration. And what? And renewing of the Holy Ghost. Mercy God is here. Amen. This is a youth, youth message. Oh yeah, to put you on a straight path. That's right. Don't be afraid to stand up and tell him, "Get out my face." That's right. Leave me alone. Yeah. I ain't giving you a dime. Yeah. No, you ain't taking my money. Amen. Get your own bank account. Amen. If sisters are in need, and a sister come to you, brother, send her to the mothers of your location. Did you hear me? Amen. Then let the mothers evaluate the matter. And if it's something that's legit, don't give her the money. Yeah. Let some go wherever she need, purchase the items for her, and then give her the items. Yeah. All that passage in it, there's some folks that are nothing but thieves. That's right. And I resort to these methods for the protection of the church. Yeah. When I was younger and pastoring, I was naive, so anxious to help people, and they helped themselves. <laughs> but I learned. Yeah. yeah. I learned. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot of times when people know you're kind-hearted, if you're not careful, they'll take advantage of you. That's right. That's right. If someone is there for you and helping you in life, why would you treat them like a dog afterward? <laughs> Young children, respect your parents. Yeah. I don't say that without understanding because I got to admit, there are some parents, they are so wicked. You struggle in respecting them. Yeah. It's hard for a child to respect a father that abused them and never been nothing to them. That's right. But someone who just abused them for years. Yeah. And then by the time they 18, 19, 20, 21, 30, then they're trying to be a father. But yeah. the damage is done. Oh, yeah. And to repair that tire, it may be difficult. And sometimes as a result of the actions of the father, that daughter or daughters may strike out at other men. Yeah. Are you listening? Amen. Take your time. Yeah. We'll see if you can shout this evening. Yes, sir. You brothers that's beaten Sisters, what you got to jump about? Mm. <laughs> That's right. You ain't got nothing to jump about. Nothing to jump about. Nothing. You sisters, stop letting men, whether in church or out, take you to the cleaners. Yeah. How many times you gonna allow yourself to be ripped off, bamboozled? You trying to be generous and let a brother hold your car mm. 
at nine o'clock. He said, I'm just going around the corner. And you don't see it at 12 midnight. Yeah. And your engine light is on. The scripture that talks about uh, shyness. Back in Ecclesiastes 20 and verse 22. Says what? There is that destroyeth his own soul. There is that that destroyeth themselves. Through bashfulness. Because you're bashful. You won't say nothing. Yeah. He come back with all these scratches on your car, dent in your car, and he say, oh, I'm so sorry. And you just say, oh, it's, it's all right. <laughs> you can look at your face and see it ain't all right. It's, it's <laughs> all right. No, it ain't all right. Say something. No, it ain't. And if you're a real man, speak up, let her know what happened, and then pay for it. Am I right? That's right. Pay for it. I see y'all brothers running around and whatnot. I see y'all sister doing the backstroke. Backstrokes. Mm -hmm. I see y'all brothers ice skating. <laughs> Amen. Amen. How many jaws did you swell? How many ribs did you crack with some feet that you shot them with? How many women did you slap? How many eyes did your hands blacken? Are you listening? Amen. We ourselves were sometimes foolish. The apostle Paul was teaching Titus. We ourselves dealing with are past mm -hmm. life. That's right. Let this be past. Past. Bring all that madness to an end. Amen. Bring all that madness to an end. Yeah. This is why I tell sisters, take your time when it comes to marrying. You want to see how angry he can get before you marry him. Sometimes deliberately push the buttons. Mm. And when that fella step up to you like a dude, you know what, you better wait now, listen. And you ain't taking no more. Why, you mother? Oof. The devil made me do no, no, that's It's already in you. <laughs> Are you listening? That's right. In many cases, the church has become nothing but a haven. They hide in it as a haven. Yeah. Camouflage. Because they know 99.9 .9 of these churches don't deal with none of these subjects. Don't touch them. But the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. I don't care if it's your brother beating your wife. Don't take up for him. If your brother beating his wife, don't take up for him. I don't care if it's your cousin. Don't take up for him. If you take up for him, you're strengthening the hands of evil doors and you're a hypocrite. Yeah. And if you take up for him, sit down. That's right. Because not only he that doeth the wrong, but he that have pleasure. In them that do it. In them that do it. Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Oh. Uh, you ready to get your sins washed away now? Washed away. Amen. Repent. And be baptized. God wants you to be baptized the right way. That's right. God wants you to repent. Be sorry about your sins. Yeah. If you've been baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you're not saved. If you bow your head and raise your hands, you're still a sinner. If you went to the Catholic Church and he threw water on you, throw it back on him. That's right. You're not saved. Not. You've got to repent. You've got to be sorry about being a child of hell. That's right. And be baptized. How much? Every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sins. That's how you get your sins washed away. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. All Ghost. right, Greensboro. Anybody here want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Come on, men. Come on, women. Stand on your feet and get right with God. All of you that are standing, go right to the back. 
All of you that are standing, march right to the back. I'm pretty sure during this convention, we done went way over 100. Amen. This is the Lord's doing. Wonderful. This is the message for the last days. This Wonderful. is the message for the last days. My sisters, my objective is to protect you. But if you don't want to listen, be a fool now. Yeah. Sex can't be all that great. He's slapping the mess out of you. <laughs> Brother, I don't care if she jumped on you at 24. She rode on you until you end up in Pampas. Yeah. <laughs> Use a messy thing. <laughs> took you backwards. And yet, <laughs> took, took you all the way back to your childhood. Yeah, all right. yeah. You mean to tell me you're willing to let her use you? And let me tell you something, women. There's some men got this attitude. Well, you use me, I'm going to use you back. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. And they both is aware they're using each other. Yeah. How sick society have become. That's right. What time do I have, brothers? All right. The next session begin what? Five o'clock. Amen. I would apologize, but no, I'm not. I suppose this is good for the present distress. Come on back. Come on back at five o'clock. Hit your knees. Take this message home. Remember, whenever we webcast, it's automatically recorded on YouTube. So it's on YouTube now. So if you go home, look at it again and get beat up and slapped with the Bible. Let us all stand. Brother Minister Lodge of Rhode North Carolina will close us out in prayer. Everlasting Most High God, we thank you for this opportunity to have been in your house of prayer, to hear your word and your counsel by our servant, your servant, the Holy Apostle. We thank you for your goodness towards us, dear Lord, constantly proving that you're not willing that any should perish. We ask you to bless us, O oh great and mighty God, as we go our separate ways. Help us to hide your word in our hearts, dear Lord, that we might live by the things that we have heard and be the people that you're calling for in these last evil days. These and all the blessings we do ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the people say amen. amen. God bless your brothers and sisters.